Dear my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us go to the Lord in prayer and thanksgiving and for his love and graciousness, we pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for sending your Son, Christ Jesus, that we might bear witness to his salvation for each one of us. Lord, we pray that this might fill our hearts with joy and gladness, that each and every day we might call you our God, and that we might bear your name to the world, to our communities, to our families. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Today, as we celebrate Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, I realize that it's one of the Sundays I actually look forward to every year. And not because we talk about Jesus, which hopefully every Sunday we talk about Jesus. Not just because we talk about witness, because hopefully every Sunday, witnessing every day, witnessing is on our hearts. But because we get a chance to look at the witness and the work of women through God's word. The witness work of women through God's word. The way that they lived out their life, the way they lived out their faith, the way that they shared the gospel. And it's a reminder that God can use anybody, that God can use man, woman, or child to share the blessing of the salvation with anybody. And the reason I, I think about that is, you know, as I think about our faithfulness, as I think about the faithful women of old, I think about the example they set for women today, for men today, for children today. The way that we model our lives after these women. Just think about last year. We talked about Ruth. Maybe you remember it, maybe you don't. But we talked about the faithfulness of Ruth. Here she was a Moabite woman. She was a woman who we would not have expected faithfulness, but that's exactly what she showed. Faithfulness first to Naomi, but more importantly, faithfulness to the true God, Yahweh. What a blessing to have her example. Well, this year, I, as I was thinking about what text to use, which woman of Scripture to use, I didn't pick maybe one that you would come to expect. There's a woman, she's unnamed. A woman whose her name is not initially given in Scripture. At the end of John chapter 7, the beginning of John chapter 8, this woman is actually known for her sin and not for her holiness, her faithfulness, or her righteousness. See, this is the story, if you're not familiar, and I encourage you to turn there now. John chapter 7, 53 to 8 verse 11. It's the story of the woman who was caught in the midst of prostitution and drug out in front of, by the Pharisees in front of Jesus. Now these Pharisees, as usual, were trying to, cra to, trying to catch Jesus in a trap. They had this great idea that they thought to themselves, well, we will catch Jesus either with Roman law or with our law. See, as they drug out this poor woman, they thought to themselves, well, Jesus will either say she should be stoned according to Levitical law, and then we'll bring him to Rome and say he's subverting the Roman law. Or he'll say, let her off. And then we'll have him because he's not obeying Levitical law, so therefore he's a blasphemer. So as is often the case with the Pharisees, though, God knew their hearts and he knew their minds. Instead, God trapped them. Jesus trapped them in their own sin. Now, we're not told exactly what he wrote on the ground that day, but if you remember, he stooped down on the ground, he got down there, and he wrote a little message in the dirt. Scripture even is very important, clear to us. It says that he got down there, and th then he, when he was talking to the woman, got back up, but... Slowly those men disperse, no longer able to, no longer able to call this woman to account. And I love the end of the text there, where Jesus says, well, where are your condemners? Where are those who condemn you? And they're all gone. Well, neither do I condemn you. Those are the words of Jesus. Those are the words of grace that he shows to this woman. See, the Pharisees, so often, they don't get it. And so I don't want to spend too much time on them. But this woman, she saw and witnessed God's grace. She saw God's grace and his transforming words. And then he sent her with an encouragement. He said, okay, now go. Go and sin no more. Now, we don't know exactly who this woman is. I'll be honest with you. It just calls her the unnamed, and she was a prostitute. She was using her body to support herself. But what we do know is what Jesus did for her. That Jesus redeemed her. Now, like I said, we don't know exactly who this was, but there's a lot of scholars who believe that it was Mary Magdalene. And if you think about Mary Magdalene's life, what happens after this then, it's quite amazing when you start to think about the way that God, the gospel transformed her. Now, I, I don't want you to just take the word of scholars, but I want to show you something in Scripture really quick here. First, I want to go to John chapter 8, the verses I was just referencing. And then I want to go to John chapter 20. And if you would like to go there with me, you're welcome to. But right at the end of John chapter 8 here, listen to Jesus' posture. Listen to how Jesus is described, how this woman is described. <clears throat> and Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? 
Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Go and sin no more. Now, I have to say one quick correction to the, Greek, or to the English here from the Greek. Is it says, no, sir, but it should be no, Lord. See, it uses the word kurios. It's a word that we use all the time. And it's the same word we use for our curie, Lord, have mercy. Here she says, no, Lord. And so that's how you should read that. Now let me turn to John chapter 20, the very end, right at the resurrection scene. And here we have an, uh, what I would say is a very similar situation. Notice the posture. Notice the words of Jesus. Notice the words of Mary. <clears throat> at this time, Mary Magdalene turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, once again, Lord, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Now, I'm not going to promise you that Mary Magdalene is a woman who's mentioned in John chapter 8. But I think it's very clear that she probably is the same one and the same. It, it probably is the same one. And even though we're not given the name, we know the life-changing work that the gospel had in this woman's life. The way that those words of forgiveness that Jesus said to her changed who she was. Notice who she was before. She was little more than property. How many men used her and abused her, never bothering to learn her name? How did she feel herself? Filthy? Dirty, disgusting. You think she looked forward to going to work? What woman would? How many times did she wonder to herself if only there was another way? How easy would it have been for her to start to ask the question of who am I? After all, John didn't even know her name. How many of the Johns, no pun intended, knew her name? She was a nameless prostitute, nearly forget, forgotten in the pages of Scripture, but not forgotten by God. Not forgotten by our Lord. By our Lord Jesus, who not only knew her as Mary, but he knew her as another name. He knew her as daughter. See, Jesus, he didn't look at her and give her some kind of cheap grace and just sweep things under the rug and say, oh, well, it's okay. Go on and do, keep doing what you're doing. But he said, you're my daughter, and I'm going to the cross for you. He went to the cross for that woman, Mary Magdalene. He went to the cross for each one of us to pay the price for our sins, not for something we deserved, but, but out of his gracious love for you, for me. He went to the cross for her. He bore her sins. He bore our sins. He gave her that free grace. It was not cheap grace. It cost him everything. But for her, it was free. And he washed her. He made, he made her clean. And he made her his very own. No longer was she filthy and nameless, homeless. But she was a member of the kingdom. No longer are we filthy and nameless and homeless, but we're members of the kingdom. Bought with that same blood of Christ. Paid for with his same payment. Now, it'd be easy to just stop right here, to just finish the story. But, it, uh, but we have to go on and see the way that the gospel transformed her life, the way that the God worked in her life to change her heart and to change who she was. Because if indeed this was Mary Magdalene, we see that not only did, did he change her life that day, but every day she followed him then. And she was at the foot of the cross. She was there to witness the resurrection. In fact, she was the very first witness to the resurrection. Notice in the garden there, it wasn't Peter or James or John. It wasn't Andrew or Philip. It wasn't someone rich. It wasn't someone who was well-known. It was Mary. It was Mary. The gospel transformed her life. And we don't necessarily need her example, do we? Because we know the way the gospel has transformed our own lives. How has the gospel transformed your life? When you think about who you were, what you were, what God is doing for you even now. It's almost a silly question to imagine that we wouldn't know 
that God is even now working on us. Sometimes I think that we do forget that. That even now God is transforming our lives through His Holy Spirit. That even now God is working through that promise that He made in your baptism to keep you as His very own. That as He washed you, as He transformed you then, that He continues to do so. That is the work of the, of the gospel. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is to transform us, not to be those who sit here in pews, but those who are His witnesses to the world. Those who carry His gospel to the very ends of the earth. Those who carry the gospel to our communities. Those who change lives for Christ. The, the Word of God that changed this woman's life, Mary Magdalene's life, is the same gospel message that changes lives to this very day. It is the same gospel message that Christ has given us to proclaim wherever we may be, whether you may live in Calexico or Imperial or Central or Brawley or Hopeville or even Sealy or wherever else you may live, God has put you in that place to proclaim His Gospel, to go and tell the world about the way the Gospel has changed you. And the Gospel is powerful. The Gospel will transform. The Gospel will change even the filthiest, dirtiest sinner. Chief of sinners though we be, Jesus shed His blood for us so that we might proclaim that good news word to the world. And folks, there are so many people who need to hear that gospel message. There are so many people who are lost and who are dying right here in our own backyard. We don't even have to go to the ends of the earth. We do need to, but not right, at the, right away to find someone who is lost. We don't have to wander too far to see someone who doesn't know Christ. Some of you, maybe it's even in your own homes. Some of you, it's in your neighborhoods. Some of you, it's the people who you go to work with. Could be someone who you're married to. Could be someone close to you. It could be someone who's living in a hotel room on Adams Avenue. Could be someone who's addict, addicted to crystal meth and doesn't know where they're going to get their next next uh, hit. Could be could be marijuana. Could be could be a woman who's selling herself even now for her next fix. But in all those cases, God wants to change their heart and change their life. Whether in your house, whether in your community, whether they're those who are a little different from you. God wants to change them just as he changed your heart. Just as the gospel worked in your life. Just as the gospel continues to work in your lives. Some of these folks, they've come into contact with the church before. They've seen the judgmental side of the church. They've seen the church come to them and tell them how wicked they are. How they failed time and again. The Pharisees did a pretty good job of that today, didn't they? They picked up their stones. They were ready to stone that woman. They were just itching to do it. Sometimes the church has acted the same way. Gone into communities and you know, sported what good Christians they were because they were helping someone out, never really caring about the person they were helping, never really caring about the heart of that person. You know, God hasn't called us to be those who simply talk about our faith. God didn't call us to be those who sit in the church and only talk about our faith. Yes, we should be in church. We should be strengthened. But this is our sending location. This is our base camp. This is where we go out from. This is where we are to depart and to go. To go to the nations. To go to our communities. To go to our families. To go and share that good news. Tra life transforming message. So let's drop our stones. Let's put aside our judgmental attitudes. Talk is cheap, isn't it? But let's drop those stones. Let's drop our judgment. And let's go to our community, to our world. And not only talk about it, but show the love of Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. We thank you for your leadership, your guidance, your love. We thank you that you have transformed our lives through your holy gospel. And we pray that each and every day you would continue to transform us. Send your Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. Lead us, Lord, with your message of hope and salvation. Lead us, Lord, to tell our stories. 
the way that you have taken us poor, miserable sinners, us filthy, disgusting sinners, and you have cleansed us with your blood and washed us and made us clean. Lead us to share that message, to share that love, to share your compassion so that all the world may know your words of forgiveness and so that all the world may know that even now you prepare a place for us. Lord, may this be our hope. May this be our strength and may this be our confidence now and forever. Amen.